In my last video, I briefly mentioned that if you're going to be taking time away from relationships to focus on developing yourself as a person, that you should study up on some basic human psychology so that way you can look out for some red flags. Well, as you can see, I'm wearing a red shirt to show you that I am a red flag. But when you think of a red flag, what comes to mind? What do you think of whenever you think, what is a red flag? What about a green flag? Yellow? It really does seem like everyone has their own individual flag system. And that's totally to be expected. And I'm actually really proud of that because people do need to set their boundaries. It is so important that you have boundaries and you expect that somebody that you're potentially going to marry in the future would want to also respect those boundaries and that they have certain expectations of you as well. That is what a relationship is all about, is about being able to tango with another person and work through all the trials and tribulations that come with relationships. So I figured I would dedicate this video to listing several different flags that I personally looked for when I was in the dating scene. And these ones are, again, just my personal opinion. Keep also in mind that feelings are going to be hurt today. I don't care. I am gonna be stepping on toes. I am going to be absolutely ruthless and brutally honest in this video. So if you did come to this video looking just for like quick five tips on red flags, this isn't that video, I'm sorry to say. If you wanna watch and hopefully you learn something from this, great, but just be ready to not take it personally. Just because the shoe fits, doesn't mean I'm talking about you specifically. Also just really final quick note before we actually jump into the red flags is that my system is that red flags are a no-go. You do not date anyone that exhibits any of these red flags. You do not go, do not pass go, do not collect 200, you go straight away. Yellow flags. Yellow flags are circumstantial. You can go, you can go away, it just depends on the circumstance. And then of course, green flags are marry that bit. <laughs> okay, so first red flag, they have absolutely crippling life-changing debt and they don't have any plans for the future of that debt that's kind of broad so let me explain if you have fifty thousand dollars or more in any debt student loan debt home mortgage debt tax debt any debt credit card debt I don't know how you would get $50,000 of credit card debt, but if for some ungodly reason you have $50,000 in credit card debt or any debt in general, and you're not hustling your ass off to work and get rid of that debt within the next three to five years, that is a giant red flag. Because if you were to date this person, they are always going to be hurting for money they're always going to be asking others for gas money or food money. They're going to be asking people to bring them food at work. They're going to be asking people to stop by so that way they can finesse them into giving them money. They're always going to be struggling. These people that get themselves into debt and hope that other people will bail them out are not going to be good for dating or even any form of marriage in the future. Do not date people that have even student loan debt. If they have student loan debt and they've dropped out of college and they don't plan on going back in and they're just living with it, don't mess with that. That's just gonna get you in trouble because they are hurting and they're looking for somebody that's stable and financially fiscal to bail them out. You don't want to be on the receiving end of that. That is a pain that no one should have to go through. Number two, they are out of shape. Fat, obese, that's right. That is a red flag. If you are a man and you're over 250 pounds, or if you're a woman and you're over 180 pounds, you're out of shape. That's a red flag. 
Yes, it is a red flag. I don't care if you say you're chunky or thick. You're fat. You're obese. Oh no, look at the viewership drop down off this video. People are clicking off left and right. Oh no, terrible. Maybe they have a glandular problem. Maybe they have a mental disability. They can't help that they're fat. It's the food's fault. It's the food industry's fault. It's their parents' fault. It's their friend's fault. No, it's their fault. It's the person's own fault. People with glandular problems that do have glandular problems or do have eating disorders, they still can lose weight. They can still be healthy. They can still live a normal life despite these disabilities. I know one, my brother is engaged to one. You are making excuses if you're overweight and you're not working on it. That's why I think it's a red flag because these people that don't want to bother making themselves look presentable and look nice for others, they're not gonna be nice to date. They're not gonna be nice to marry. It also shows a lack of commitment to being able to go to a gym or a lack of commitment to stay healthy or a lack of commitment to managing their diet. It just shows poor mental health, poor physical health, and lack of being committed to staying healthy. Nobody that wants a serious marriage finds large people attractive. That's just how it is. That's how the world is. Okay, red flag number three. They treat people in the service industry like shit. They don't tip. They don't say please or thank you. They give an attitude to the server about the food that the chef made. They treat the bar pe the barkeeper poorly. If they just treat anybody in the service industry at any point in time, if they treat them poorly, they don't like talk to them, they don't try and engage in conversation, they're rude, they're curt, they don't tip, that's a red flag. Because if they are like this in a public space, if they are treating these people that are serving them this way in public, what are they going to do to you in private when they have control of you? They can control the server, but what are they gonna do to you? You don't want to mess with people that poorly treat service people. It's a red flag, do not approach. Fourth red flag, they enjoy drama. They enjoy causing drama, they enjoy stirring up drama. They enjoy talking to exes or baby daddies or baby mamas. They love asking aggressive questions. They love hanging out with friends that are doped up on drugs all the time. They're literally fighting over anything. Just genuine, dramatic, aggressive people that have friends that are also dramatic or they come from a background or a gang that's a red flag to me because if your life is all about going online or going causing drama or just talking about who's doing what or sticking your nose where it doesn't belong, that's not attractive. That's hostile. You don't want to mess with that. You don't want any kind of drama like that. Useless drama. Okay, obviously there's drama in relationships. Obviously there's things that happen in relationships, but those are because of either you or your partner. It doesn't involve anybody else, no one. So if somebody that you're talking to is talking about exes or baby daddies or whoever or whatever, and it involves other people and they're slandering other people's names behind that person's back, they are a red flag. Do not approach, do not continue. Because a good person that has good faith and good intentions does not even talk about other people unless it's in a positive way. Like my friend owns this business. I can get you his contact information. 
this other friend, we went out fishing and we caught this big ass white carp. If they talk positively about people, cool, green flag. But if they're slandering and talking nasty about other people, red flag, stay away. Finally, the fifth red flag, they have deep crippling addictions. Smoking, whether it's cigarettes or weed, it doesn't matter, any form of smoking, drugs, alcohol, a genuine online gaming addiction, relying on, this one's gonna be, a, this one's gonna hit a lot of nerves too, but this is also an addiction, keep in mind. A reliance on pills to deal with depression, anxiety, or any form of a mental illness. This goes way deeper than I'm willing to put into this video. I'm gonna make a future video on this, but just know that if they have a deep addiction of any kind of a negative substance that harms their health, and they haven't been to therapy, they can't, like even if they do say they've been to therapy, ask them the th their therapist's name. I guarantee you that if you ask for a therapist's name, they either A, can't provide it, or B, will lie. People that have these addictions, 99% of the time are not actively seeking therapy. Self-therapy does not count for hard, deep addictions. You need a professional help if you have a deep addiction. That's why this is a red flag. They need to help themselves. They have their own demons to struggle with. You're not the one that's qualified to help someone get over a heavy addiction like this. Don't go in trying to think that you're being a superhero because you're not. You're gonna make things worse. You're gonna enforce their addiction and it's just gonna be a mess. Leave it to professionals and leave it to them to find professional help. You're not that professional help. Please don't jump into a relationship thinking that you're saving someone. I promise you, you're not, and you're just gonna hurt everyone involved. I've, I've tried, I've done it before, it never works. I'm sure there's anecdotal evidence that somebody helped someone out there, but in most, a majority of cases, it doesn't help. Okay, let's move on to lighter topics, which is the yellow flags. You know, the ones that like, eh, I, 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 depends on the context. So the first yellow flag, tattoos. Yeah, I'm cool with tattoos. You can have like a tattoo on your shoulder or your back or something. I would say the limit would be two tattoos for me. I wouldn't, I wouldn't date anyone with more than two tattoos. And the tattoos have to have significant meaning, like if, you had tattooed the name of your grandmother because your grandmother was there when your parents died or something. Something extreme and something that actually represents a heavy life-changing event. Cool, go ahead, get that tattoo. I would still date somebody with that tattoo. But if you have three or more tattoos or you have tattoos on your face or your hands or your foot or your here's or down there's or something if you have a tattoo in an unconventional area that can't be covered by a long sleeve shirt or pants then i'm that that's just a red flag for me then i'm i'm not i'm not i'm passing i'm, I'm passing on that but for the most part it's like anecdotal tattoos are cool but don't get too many and have them in spots that can be covered by minimal clothing Second yellow flag, the person comes from a broken family. Now I was initially considering this as a red flag, an absolute deal breaker, but after thinking about it, that would mean that I am actually a red flag because I come from a broken family. My parents divorced when I was seven years old. My father died when I was like 14 or 15, I can't even remember. So I was raised by a single mother my whole life. I come from a broken family and look at everything that I have now. <laughs> wow, that's just that kind of little realization is just so amazing to me, man. That, that's so incredible. I, this, wow. Okay, back on topic. Stop being sentimental, Jeff. Okay, back on topic. So the reason why a broken family can be a yellow flag is because they could be like me. 
They could have come from a broken family, but they could have made it and they could have gotten better and they could have actually gotten out here and been successful. So then that's a green flag. On the other hand, a lot of people come from broken families and they go on to create more broken families. I don't want that for me, that's why I changed myself. That's why I raised myself since I was like 15. That doesn't change the fact that statistically speaking, broken families tend to create more broken families. It's just how it is. It's deep human psychology that's way too in depth for me to actually go into in this video. Just understand that if somebody comes from a broken family, it could be a good thing, it could be okay, it could be bad, go with your own discretion based on how their family is and how they seem to be. Third yellow flag, they have no bills. This one's different from the debt, okay? If they don't have any bills, there are reasons why this could be. I'm talking about like they don't have any rent, they don't have any mortgage, they don't have any taxes, they don't have any like phone bills or service bills or utility bills. They just don't have any bills. Could be a bad sign if they're still living with their parents. If you're 22 or 23 or older and you're still living with your parents and you're not actively attending college, denied. I don't want, I don't want to deal with that. On the other hand, if you're living with your parents because you recently went through extreme hardship and you genuinely lost all your money and your, and your resources, and you're sitting with your parents for like a year to gather yourself up again, okay. But like I said, like all these yellow flags are literally anecdotal. If you don't have any bills, it could be good, it could be bad, just depends on the context. That's why these are yellow flags, okay? Because it really does depend on the context. But I still think it's important to discuss these because when you do date someone, it's important to discuss these kind of things. So that way you can get a true feel for how they really are. Fourth yellow flag, they don't have any friends at all. No friends, no best friend, no lackey, no no one. It's a yellow flag because if they don't have any friends, they could be really antisocial or just socially awkward. Okay, if you're okay with that, then go, by all means go ahead. Or they could just be straight up assholes. They could just straight up be unpleasant to be around. And if that's the case, because they don't have any friends, because nobody wants to be around them, why would you want to be around them? So then denied. Fifth yellow flag. They have kids from another parent. This is a yellow flag because as like with the broken family flag, Kids in relationships are very, very sensitive topics. On the one hand, if the person that you're seeing has kids and they are on good terms with their baby parent, and the baby parent's okay and stable, and they are okay with you dating the person you're interested in, go ahead. It's an odd family dynamic and sometimes unfortunate things do happen. In those cases, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with you raising other people's kids. That's a very specific situation though. On the other hand, if the person that you're interested in has a bitter ex and is giving the kids issues, you might more than likely want to stay away from them until they sort things out with their ex. Because that ex is gonna cause problems for you and you don't even know that person. You don't want anything to do with that person because you're just trying to date this other person that they made kids with. And again, things happen, but if the ex is an asshole and is being unreasonable about moving on, then you don't want to deal with that. You pass. Because that ex is gonna bring nothing but trouble for you. It's gonna cost you a lot of money. It's gonna cost you stress and time. And it's just not worth dealing with somebody who has a bitter ex that's still in their lives for reasons of whatever, I don't know. I don't have a baby mama, so I don't know. But th that's why I say this is a yellow flag because like I've not been in the situation, but I can understand sometimes people don't mind being stepfathers. 
Other times, it's a hassle to be a stepfather. It depends. Okay, so now we end on the green flags. The green flags are pretty much literally anything that you want them to be. I'm not really gonna list any green flags here because I personally only had one green flag requirement when I was in the dating scene. And that requirement was that they had to come from a strong, stable family with both parents in the household and both parents having raised them. That was my only green flag because I came from a broken family. Okay, so I'm already a walking yellow flag. I knew that if I met a woman that was raised by both of her parents and both parents made sure that she turned out to be the best that she absolutely could be, I would be set and she could teach me all kinds of things. And that's how it's worked out for me. I'm able to have a family of my own now because I went out of my way to make sure that I'm set up to where I want to be. So that's why I say this is my number one green flag. The other person comes from a strong, stable family with both parents in the household. Any other green flag you want is cool. If they like fishing, cool. If they like hunting, cool. If they like cars, cool. If they like this, cool, that, cool. Green flags can be pretty much anything that isn't a red or yellow flag, obviously. But I just wanted to share my opinion on this because red flags, obviously, it's very important you avoid them. Yellow flags, it's important that you use critical thinking and reasonable deducting to figure out if that's a good fit for you or not. And green flags, just make sure that they're from a stable family. And that's it. Do me a favor. If you found this helpful, share the video. This, the, my videos have only been getting a reach of 300 to 500 people. It's been ridiculous. YouTube just doesn't like me for some reason. So every time that you click share, you don't even have to share it with anyone, okay? You don't have to share it. Just click share and copy the link and YouTube will then assume that you had sent it to someone. Whether or not that someone clicks on it or not is of no concern to YouTube. YouTube just cares that you clicked and copied the link. That's it. That would be the easiest way to help me out with getting reach out to, the, to people so that way they can see this. Subscribing to my channel for future videos and liking the video also helps too. But please just help me out because I'm putting all my heart into trying, these, trying to get my message out here. It's just frustrating to be like, some submitted but it's just frustrating to feel like submissive to the youtube algorithm because i'm only getting like three digit reach so help me out because i'm helping you out and the least that you could do is just five seconds of liking subscribing and sharing that's it so I really look forward to seeing you back in a future video. Remember to take care of your mind, body, and soul, and I really hope that you have a good day. 